Hey guys, welcome back to Cross Cranks, where we make baits and paint lures. Alright, um, <clears throat> so I had a little order here for a customer, and uh, it was going pretty good. And I thought, well, I might as well make a video of it, because I haven't made one of these yet on this particular mold. Um, so, I'm sure you've seen in the thumbnail that we're going to be making some spinner baits. And, uh, yeah, let me show you uh, my process, and... We'll go through all the steps okay so first i'm going to show you what i'm using which mold i'm using i'm using the do it spinner jig it's model s j s h s a and it's a quarter ounce three eighths and a half ounce so i'm just making quarter ounce and three eighths ounce for this customer um so, uh, yeah, it's a good mold. Now, one thing I do is I always take this little hanger off of here. And it just pops out of there. You just pop it right out. And uh, that way it's not rocking around on that hanger. And the other thing is I went and made me a block. Got me a block of wood. And I cut it just the thickness, the perfect thickness for doing spinner baits. When I push this mold down completely flat, and it's kind of raised up in the middle there, but I'm pushing it down on the handles. Um, it, it levels out perfect for laying these little spinner uh, spinner loops on there. And um, so for the quarter ounce, I'm using, or actually for the three eighths ounce, I'm sorry, I'm using four, 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 two. And you can pick these up at Barlow's Tackle or lower parts online. Um, and it's a, a looped eye 3 8 ounce for a looped eye spinner bait. And this one is a 0 0.40 thickness. Now it's important that you get the right size on your recommendations right here that tells you what to, what, what to use. Um, because if you try to use something thicker or something thinner, it's just going to be a total pain in the butt. And, uh, you, you know, it's, it's going to give you problems. So Get the right ones um, for this particular mold. Like I said, for the three eighths ounce, it's four 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 two, and um, then over here on the other ones, it's a four 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 two, but it's a point three five, and it's for a quarter ounce. It'll tell you on there, so you just need to know the differences. And I'll put some links in the in the description. It's um, as you can see these part numbers right here. The longer number under there tells you, um, you know, quarter ounce, 0 0.035. All right, so that's what you want to use. That's the recommended loops. And these make a little smaller spinner bait, quarter ounce. And then the 4442, 3 eighths, and 040. So that's how you know which ones you need. And that's a 0 0.40 thickness. All right, so those are the ones we're going to use. Um, I do have for the half ounce, but... Uh, um, I don't make too many half ounce. Most of the people want a three eighths ounce, and some people want a quarter ounce. This guy likes to fish for crappie, and uh, he likes the three eighths ounce and the quarter ounce. Um, and so let's uh, let's make some. All right, so I got my block here, and I got it all measured out to the right height. Um, so let's do a quarter ounce first, and then I'll show you the hooks I'm using. Um, now for the quarter ounce ones. They were, uh, I already had some hooks and uh, I wanted to try. And these, whoop, these are the, the Eagle Claw. It's just a straight shank, long, long shank. Um, this is a, a, for the hook size you're going to need is a 2 0 or 3 0. 2 0, 3 0. So these are 2 0s. And uh, since he's fishing crappie, it's got the round bend on it. Works really good. I've already fished with these a couple times. Um, so this kind of little combination here works out really good. Um, so what you want to do is get it placed in there. And you can see how the block keeps it keeps it in the right spot. And uh, get it laid in there. And you don't want it too far down. You want your hook to be up in this little hook holding area right here um and the these little eagle claw sh two odd straight shanks fit right in there perfect all right 
So we're ready to go on that. Um, and I don't do more than one at a time just because, you know, you usually end up messing one of them up anyway. And I'll show you a little trick to recover your, your rig if you uh, mess it up. Um, but you want that little hook to be kind of in the fatty part of the, of the uh, spinner. Kind of right in there. I don't know if you can see that on the, on camera. Let me see if I can kind of lean it in and let you see that a little better. So you can see I put that in the fatty part because you don't want that to be sticking out when you uh, pour pour your leads. I already got the pot heated up, and uh, you're supposed to use it. Says recommends use a ladle, but I've had pretty good luck with using my pot. Now hold this down here. And then don't, try not to move it too much and just bend this end over. Just like so. A little fly, a little gnat flying around right there. And then I'll just push that down, keep my fingers out of the way. Push it down until I see that thing lock in there. Once you're locked in, you're in pretty good shape. All right. Um, this mold's been working really good without heating it. Um, just the pour on it has been really easy and it's really easy to come out so i haven't smoked this mold i haven't done anything but i oiled the hinges um so works out it's worked out really good all right let me turn you around get you over here by the pot um adjust you a little bit all right so on my red pot over here you can see I got a can um, I've used been using this little chicken salad can that's come from the dollar store and I can say don't eat this chicken salad it's nasty it's nasty but I really only bought it for the for the can a tuna can works whatever it catches it so it doesn't splatter so much lead um, and sometimes I got little lead splattered around here and you know all the lead warnings you know, don't eat it. Don't get it on in your skin. You know, just and don't stick your finger under that hot dripping lead. All right. But these little cans work good because the lead don't stick to it. And uh, I can always dump it right back in. You can see it's about to drip. And uh, these things, this is a brand new, pretty brand new pot. So it doesn't, it doesn't. They'll, they'll still drip all right be careful lead is hot and it'll burn the shit out of you so be careful all right now usually what i'll do is if it's dripped already or about to drip i'll just move that out of the way tilt this a little bit and you can swing it under there now look you can see yeah, there's a little bit of a drip i don't want that drip to fall in so a lot of times i'll just catch it on the side of my mold right there just to make sure then i'll tilt this back and don't let up. Just go until it fills. Okay, that was a pretty sloppy pour when I'm doing it on camera. It's always sloppy. Put your lid back under there, your can back under there to catch your drips while you're getting this free. All right, let's see how this guy turned out. Take my pliers here, pop it out, and there we go. It's a pretty good one. All right, take right here. This mold's really easy to, to deburr and to get the thing off. So you just take a hold of it, and you're just going to twist it. Get a little twist. And it pops right off. All right. There we go. As you can see, it's got a little, little thing here. And... There is, um, I believe I can put, um, put a, uh, oh, shoot, forgot what it was called. A little, uh, bait catcher there, a little, for your, for your rubber plastics, you know what I'm talking about. Um, you can put those in there too, um, but I'm going to glue these skirts on, and I got some good skirts to go with them, so, so let's do a 3 8 And we'll do another couple. And then we'll paint them up. We'll clean them up, paint them up. 
and uh, put some skirts on them. All right, let's see. That's a quarter ounce. Keep them separate because it is confusing once you pull them out, which ones you got. And I always save these little tags until I order some more. That way I know. All right, now on these, I've got the VMC hooks. And these are really super hooks, especially for the 3 8 um, I just like the way they I like the way they work all right so as you can see there's only one way you can put this in here if I put it in like this it's gonna hit my hinge so I know I'm in the wrong way but if your hook you take your hook point same angle as your loop and hook it in like that and your your hook will lay in that hook slot. If it's not in there, then you don't have you don't have it in there right. Push it down a little bit. You don't want this to be up here because it's going to block the flow of the lead coming in. So get it down there a little bit. Usually if the hook's tip is just touching, you're in the right spot. Okay, and that depends on what hooks you're using too. This one recommends a few different hooks, but usually if you go on the Barlow's or Lure Parts Online, it's usually got the recommended stuff you need, and that's really how I found what I needed. Hold that down on this end, because if I let that end go down, it's going to pop out of there. All the way down, boom, I'm in. All right. And like I said, I haven't had to heat this mold or anything. This 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 one pours perfect, pretty much all the time. But if if it's a bad pour, it's it's because of me. All right, let's pour lead in. Let's get some lead in it. Just take and knock your. Just push your can out of the way. Right after it drips, come right up underneath of it. I tilt it a little bit so I don't move it. Push it under there. And that's gonna be a nice pour right there. Okay. Sorry for moving the camera around on you. All right, let's demold it. Good pour there. Like I said, this mold pours, pours awesome. I got another one that I did, um, another one, and I'll do that in a separate video for a different kind of spinner bait. But this is the one he likes. Okay, let's do one more of the quarter ounce ones. You can see I've been pouring for a little, got a, quite a few here for him. Yeah, I got the quarter ounces over there. I keep them separate. Although with the different hooks on it, it's kind of easy to tell which is which. But sometimes with the half ounce and the three eighths ounce, it's a little, you can get a little confused. You end up having to weigh them out. So again, I'm using this little Eagle Claw Golden. I think they're laser tip brand. Okay, again, hook point in, loop it, slip it in here, make sure it's kind of in the fatty part of the swim bait, and this quarter ounce don't have much fat, so you got to kind of get it right in the right spot. Hold this end down. If I, if I don't, this is going to drop, and it's going to knock it out of place. So hold that down, lift your handle. Close it over. That's why it's important really too to oil your hinges up so they move nice and freely for you. There we go. We're in. Let's pour. I'll get you a little closer this time. It's about to drip. Let that drip fall because it'll clog you up and it'll mess you up. Get me up underneath of here. Hold it down, let it fill. Cool. 
Nice little quarter round spinner head. Just twist it. And it leaves a nice clean, nice clean. You don't have to touch very much of that with a little bit of a file or a little Dremel tool. And you're ready to ready to paint. All right, let's do uh, let's do one more three eighths ounce. Okay, so we're using the three eighths ounce one, and we're using the three aught VMC hooks. And there's a few different hooks you can use with this mold. So just when you whoop. About to do the wrong one when you uh go on there to order your mold just get what they recommend it works out that's what i found out with these molds these do it molds you really want to get what they recommend because it's hard to it's hard to, to use something that's not really recommended i looked at the 2.0 the two lot um hooks and uh they sold these kind for this uh, mold, so I knew that those would work, that what I already had. Okay, three eighths in there. Come over here. And you can see I forget to put my thing back under there. It makes a mess. You really, really need a can, especially if you're going to walk away from it. Let it drip. Get the can out of the way. It's about to drip again. Knock it off. Tilt it. I was kind of hoping to mess one up so I could show you. I think I got one over there that I can show you how to get the get the lead off. Good one. Give it a little twist. It's really a good mold. I mean, you can spend a lot of time messing around with a mold if you if it's not a good mold and it ain't working right. You gotta heat it, you gotta smoke it, you gotta do all kinds of things. But this mold here really pours nice and easy. That's what you want when you're making baits to make money. You want them quick and easy so you can make a bunch of them really fast without a lot of messing around. So, all right. So, um, if you mess one up, and like you can see, this one didn't pour all the way down. Um, price, I think I either paused or it wasn't, it wasn't all the way in there. But basically, you can just take a torch. And let me turn this around to the heat. Hot. And then get you a torch. And something to hold on to this dude so you don't burn your hand. And I lay my hook on there so it don't fall in. Get all covered. Hold the torch on there within a few seconds. All that drip right off. And there you go, you can reuse it again. So, yeah, just a little tip. If you don't want to waste a bunch of them, don't want to mess one up. If you mess one up, you can still save it. Do it again. All right, okay, so that's the simple. Simple spinner bait pour. Let's uh, get them cleaned up and uh, get some uh, get some powder paint on them. I got a couple. I got a new way that I've been epoxying these. Um, that I'll show you. That uh, since this one has a raised eye, we're gonna paint a little eye on there 
and uh, we're going to need to put a little epoxy on it plus it just helps protect the powder coat a little little longer I think all right so I'll bring you back when we're ready to to powder coat Clean these up a little bit. Won't be much at all. Just using a little carbide tip. Pushing away with the tip, you won't get as much, it won't dig in. You can just knock enough of that burr off of there. Get it looking good. Quick and easy. Alright. I'll bring you back and we'll paint these. Okay, let's get a little color on a couple of these. I'll just show you a few of the colors I'm doing. I won't make you watch all me, all the me doing all these. Um, so I'm doing uh, six colors, six different colors here. I'm doing uh, white, which I obviously already did a couple in white on each one. Then I'm doing chartreuse pepper, which is a chartreuse with a black little speck in it. Then I'm doing chartreuse, green chartreuse. I'm doing green pumpkin. And then I'm doing yellow chartreuse. Can't see them, can you? Yellow chartreuse. And then I'm doing a pearl pepper. Which is a white pearl with a black flake specks in it. Um, so that's the colors he wanted. And I'm going to do a couple for myself. Um, this is definitely going to do a couple white ones and some chartreuse. Um, these are the... Uh, <clears throat> The fluid beds I built in one of the videos, if you go back and check, you'll see that I have a fluid bed video on there for making these fluid beds. Um, and the reason why I did make the deep ones was for these particular baits right here. Just making these uh, these spinner baits because you need a deep, you need a deep well to dip these guys down in. And even then you still got to have a good flow coming up to cover the whole thing. So. Um, let me turn my pump on and I'll show you a couple of these and then uh, we'll get to putting the uh, the skirts and, and eyes and epoxy on them. So let me plug this in. All right. And then uh, it's always a good idea to I keep one of these little cheap Walmart brushes here and fluff it out a little bit, especially if it's been sitting for a while. Oh, these some of these colors I've been using anyway, so. They're kind of loose. Um, I got it about a little more than halfway filled up. Um, and then I got to get my jar going. Or get my uh, fluid bed going. I like to do it really slow. So it don't go puffing out all over the place. But usually you can give a little shake. And start opening up your valve. And start to see it rising up towards the top. And I don't know 
if you can see that or not. Let me bring the camera over so you can kind of see it. Puffing up there a little bit. It's just rolling. Get the camera focus in on that for a minute. But that's what it looks like. All right, turn my heat on high. Might have it hot enough, I don't think. So I'm gonna dip it one more time. There we go. Don't worry about the hook too much. I'll brush that off before I put it in the oven. There we go. There's a nice color. finished okay so that was the process of putting the powder coat on pretty simple um, but I'll just go ahead and um, do the rest of these colors and I'll show you the finished uh, pieces when I get them all coated okay we got our quarter ounce jigs in there baking right now for uh, I got them on 225 we'll do that for 30 minutes and um, I'm putting epoxy on top of them anyway, so um, not too worried about the finish coming off. But I got the quarter ounces in there. Okay, um, we're ready to paint some eyes on these guys. Actually, I already went on and did some of them, but let me show you what I'm doing here. Um, so we'll, I've done basically two colors, red and black. Um, so i got a little tray here. I just put a little a few drops of... A little few drops of uh, red in there or black, whatever. And um, I got a bunch of blades laid out. I'll talk to you, talk to you about them in just a minute. Um, but basically, just put you a little drop, or two on there. You don't need much. Um, then I'm gonna use my little all-purpose burnisher tool that I always use, and you guys always see me putting eyes on. I should call this the eye tool. But basically, I'm just going to drip this in here, get a little drop on there. And these eyes are raised on these uh, spinner baits. So, pretty much, you just take your little dropper and just touch it. And it kind of goes around that little raised eye. Works out great. Um, if you don't have one of these, get you one. You can use it for so many different things. But just touch that on there. And get them pretty equal and I just hang it up on my little rack here and in case somebody asks me where I got this rack this is basically just a, like a um, a juicer thing it's got a big cone that sits down inside of it and like when you're making tomato sauce and stuff you just mash it all down through there it's got like a uh, like a cheese grater type thing on it that uh, squeezes out all the tomato juice and stuff pretty much a juicer but I just we never use it anymore because we have a electric juicer 
So I was like, wow, that thing works pretty good for hanging baits on while you're waiting for them to dry. So yeah, just take the little burnisher. And I'm just using, I'm just using um, Createx Wicked um, Crimson and then black because uh, I'm going to, I like to put a little epoxy on them. For one, it helps protect the powder coat, it makes it last a little longer. Um, and then it definitely protects the paint on the eyes. Because after a couple whacks from a big bass or something, you're going to probably, the eyes are probably going to come off. And because it's a water base, um, because it's a water base, it's pretty much going to come off eventually anyway. Um, but yeah, that's it. I've got all these done. Um, on the pumpkin, green pumpkin, um, I'm going to use white. Well, no, I think I did. Yeah, I used red. I couldn't remember for what I did on the other ones. This red stands out pretty good on there. So basically, just touch it on there. It works perfect. All right. To go until you get them all done and um, like I said I just let them hang and dry for a little bit and then I come back and what I'm using for epoxy is um, I went and got some of this at Hobby Lobby when I was over there the last time picking up some some paints and um, I tried this and I know in the other video I talked about using the uh, testers um, but I think the testers took a lot of time to dry this cures in like 30 minutes um, so if you know some people use this on their lures and stuff I have a couple lures used it but um, I just I'm just a big fan of the of the UV epoxy um, it just seems like that uh, this stuff hardens so fast that you can only get one or two baits before you have to clean out your brush and and it's already gummy and hard so if you're only doing one lure I guess it would be all right and it don't I don't think it spreads as smooth I just I'm just a fan of dipping and getting them uh, getting them done that way. Hang them and just once you start something and it works, you know, you're you're kind of apt to not want to switch too much when things are going good. So, um, but I got one more here to do, and then um, I'll give you a quick glimpse of me putting some epoxy on one or two of them. I'm gonna go ahead and epoxy them all. And then um, we're gonna do spinner bait. We're gonna talk about putting the spinners on and and skirts and finish it up. All right. So I'll bring you back when we're ready to do that. Okay. Let's put a little uh, epoxy on some of these. I already got some of them done, but I thought I'd show you just a few of them. And then uh, we'll talk about the blades um, that I got laid out here. Okay. So I'm using the Bob Smith Industries. And uh, you can also use, this works good too, um, <clears throat> the Gorilla Glue Epoxy. It's a uh, five minute though. It's pretty quick. It sets up pretty quick. So um, since I got a few of them to do, the Bob Smith gives me a little more time. Um, but the best way to do these is to just do a little bit at a time. And that way if it hardens up on you, you don't lose a bunch of, a bunch of epoxy. Um, and I just tip them upside down until the bubble goes to the top. Once they both get settled down into the bottom, you just squeeze them both at the same time. This is the way I like to do it, just since I'm doing just a little bit of a mount. And get them both coming out about the same quantity. And that'll probably be plenty right there to finish these up and then uh, make sure you put your caps back on to the right ones so yellow on yellow and black on black and again it's 30 minutes um, I use these little toothpick packs I, I bought at Walmart and just mix it up real good it'll kind of get creamy looking and then it'll uh, as you start to put it on it'll it'll look clear it'll start getting clear but yeah just my goal uh, my advice is to not really mix up a bunch at once 
because you'll uh, you'll just lose a lot of it. And it don't take much on these little spinner baits. Again, I'm just doing it to protect the powder coating and protect the eyes that I painted on there. Because, uh, you know, you, whoops, sorry, you got to bang them against the rocks and stuff. And drag them across the rocks. Um, then I just use a little cheap Walmart brush. Get a little bit on your brush. Paint it on there. Like so. And just hang them so they don't touch each other. If they touch each other, they're going to... You're going to have a dual spinner bait. That won't work too good. But this, if you if you use an enamel paint on the eyes, you probably can skip this step. But it's just one thing I like to do. Just since I'm selling these and I want to give somebody a good product, I don't want them to bang it a few times on the rocks and powder coat be all beat up. Just go through and get all of them and then let them set um, for a few hours just so they're not tacky when you start to handle and put the skirts on so I'm gonna do the rest of these you can see I got some laid out over here that are already done <clears throat> Again, I won't make you guys watch this whole process here, but pretty simple. Bob Smith works pretty good. It, if you hang them, they'll smooth out real good. And since you're not putting a ton on there, it's it's not going to drip and run too much. Actually, really, it don't rip, don't run at all. Just enough to smooth out. So, okay, while these are finishing up here, setting up. Um, I got some, we'll put some blades on, but, um, I thought I'd talk to you about blades a little bit if you're new to spinnerbaits. Um, now, what I would typically recommend for somebody new making spinnerbaits is to get the assortment pack, all right? Uh, Lure Parts Online offers an assortment pack, and, um, this is just the mixed assortment pack. I bought two of them, and a lot of the blades, you know, the cool thing is, is you'll get a bunch of different blades, um, Colorado blades, which is these, you can get Colorado blades, that's this teardrop kind of shape, um, then willow blades, which is about the reason what's willow blade is, it's like a willow leaf, um, different colors, chrome, gold, green, chartreuse, shiny, metallic, um, colored, um, just, it's kind of cool to, um, just get an assortment pack and um i bought two assortment packs and they didn't have the same blades in them so um it was kind of cool because i got to make a lot of different types of uh, blades and experiment around with setting up the kind of spinner baits that i wanted to sell um so um i would recommend getting the assortment pack now you can get an assortment pack of just colorado blades you can get an assortment pack of willow french um Indiana blades. There's a bunch of different kinds of blades. So if you just go on their site and uh, lower parts online and check it out, you'll you'll see the options. But um, the cool thing is, if you get an assortment pack, you can kind of make up different kinds of spinner baits. Um, and uh, most of these, I'm just doing a single blade. Um, but normally, you could do you could well, we might do one double blade just to show you how to put a double blade on. Um, but um, Typically, um, if you go online and you look, search spinner baits, they range in price from like six dollars fifty cents up to twenty five bucks. So, um, the if you get the assortment pack, it's like twenty one bucks, I think, with tax and shipping, and comes out to about twenty five bucks. Um, it gives you a lot of options, and you can sell these, you know, whatever you, I mean, whatever price you want to put on them. 
Um, but you can definitely make your money back on the blades for sure and all the hardware and everything. So um, that's what I would suggest is get an assortment pack. And I just kind of picked out some of them out of the assortment pack that I wanted to use. I got, like I said, I got two assortment packs. And they had some of the similar blades in there, some of the same blades. But, you know, there was a lot of different blades too. So it kind of gave me an option to see which blades I like. Um and test them you know see the action of them and things like that so um yeah that's that's what we uh got for blades and like i said if you want to just go with all willow blades you can get an assortment of willows you can get an assortment of colorado blades indiana blades whatever you like um but uh that's just this is just a little sampling of them i've, I've used most most of them out of there already um just for different baits and uh we're gonna put some baits together with with these um with these blades so um put put a few cool looking spinners together um it's crazy like these ones that i had with the fish on them like this is a little bluegill i think it looks like a bluegill pattern there's another bluegill pattern and then I got a little fire tiger here, which I'm probably not going to use that. I'm going to do that, a fire tiger color uh, spinner bait to put that on. But I just thought I'd lay that out there. Um, but what's cool is um, is it just gives you a big an assortment. And there's a little frog pattern. Um, people people really go after the ones with the uh, with the fish on them. It was really cool. Like a bunch of the ones I sold at the last event I was at, um, they really went for the pattern ones. So I don't know. I'm I'm a subject to using the gold and the chrome and the uh, um, nickel finish, black nickel. Those are the colors I like. The whites, the white little metallic pearl white here looks good um i just think it creates a little more flash um if you pair these up with um you know like a a, a pattern on your on your spinner it could look i guess it looked like a, a little school or two fish swimming by each other or whatever so i don't know i haven't fished those yet um but i do like i said i do like the um i'm a, a fan of uh, chrome and and gold chrome and the flashy ones that's going to create some flash in the water. Okay, guys, here's the finished spinner baits. I got one left that I'm going to put together for you, show you how to put it together. But these are all the different ones I came up with. And um, I'll give you a little slideshow at the end if you want to see each one. Um, I'll just do uh, photos of each one and put it in a slideshow at the end of the video. They're all looking pretty good. I'm, I think my customer is going to be excited. He's already been here. He's seen some of them when I was putting them, but putting them together, and uh, he likes them. I like them. Um, yeah. So let's put one together, and I'll show you how to put one completely together. Now, some of them have uh, single blades. Some of them have uh, double blades. So. Um, that's why I say you can get an assortment pack and you can play around with different kinds that you like. And it's, it's actually kind of fun creating different patterns, just like painting baits, just creating your own, your own um, spinner bait patterns. And uh, so for, for the skirts, um, some of them I made, put together myself, and some of them I bought uh, from Barlow's. Like these here, you can buy these really nice skirts from Barlow's. And uh, that's a that's a bluegill on a pumpkin seed, and I got a chrome blade on a uh, nickel chrome blade on there, black nickel. Um, so yeah, buy your assortment packs, and you can really play around with different things. Um, here's another Barlow's tackle um, skirt. Black and blue. I'm not, I can't remember what exactly the name is, but if you go to uh, Barlow's, you can find bags of these. They'll, you can get like 10, 10 at a, in a pack. Um, and if you do you could use Barlow's, 
do me a favor and put Krusty Cranks in the coupon code. And um, that just throws a little change towards the channel. Because um, I am affiliate with Barlow's now. And uh, I really love Barlow's just because of their shipping times. And they're fast. They get your stuff right to you right away. Um, but let's put, let's put this last one together. Um, and I'll show you how I do it. Okay, so basically you're going to need your jig head, you're going to need a skirt, and I already put this together. Um, it's got a little white, black, and silver flash in it. And um, then you need blades. I got two pearl bl blades here, a Colorado and a Willow. Um, when you buy your beads, you can buy assortment packs of beads as well. So you get a bunch of different kinds of beads and colors of beads and um, a lot of them will complement whatever colors you want you want to do with it. Um, you're going to need these little clevis, clevises that are for um, putting on the second blade. Then you're going to need a couple, some split rings and you're going to need some barrel swivels. Um, so... Basically, I went with the nickel, black nickel, um, because they don't rust as, as easy. Um, and another tip is if you're using spinner baits, is always let your spinner baits dry out before you stick them back in your bag or your box or whatever. And then that way they won't rust on you. Um, a lot of people just throw them back in their box when they're all wet and then they get them out next time to use them and they're all rusted and that's the worst thing that can happen to your barrel swivels is that they rust and uh that's why i kind of go with the nickel because it doesn't it doesn't seem to rust um and most of these all have either the gold barrel swivels on them or the nickel um black nickel um so okay and tools you're gonna need you're gonna need obviously split ring pliers you're gonna need some needle nose pliers and this helps out too is the uh the round bend uh tip pliers and pretty much those are the tools you're gonna need to put this together and then obviously uh you'll need a little loctite just to stick your skirt on um, this one was kind of messed up, so I decided to keep this one for myself. It got a little unfilled down here at the bottom, and it was a little rough at the top there. But it's no no big deal. I'm going to use it myself anyway. So, you know, no big deal there. Okay, so a tip is when you put your blade on, always make sure you put your blade going in the correct direction so that it spins right. You don't want it spinning backwards. Um, and then I always put a little bead on the end there. Um, just keeps the, keeps it from getting hung up up here. I just like to do that. Um, I've seen that on some other spinner baits, so that's what I do. Turn your blade in. So you want the concave part, I think it is. The part that sticks out. Bellows out. Turn that towards the top. All right. And then I always like to put a few beads here just to keep them separated. You can put as many as you want. Um, so we'll put, let's do the pearl ones. I got two pearl ones here. We'll do a black. And then we'll do two pearls. And they're a little different size because I've used a lot of these beads. Um. So I'm almost out of beads. I got to get some more beads. One thing you can do too is buy metal beads. Um, if you want all the, the all chrome look, you can buy the metal beads. Um, but these work out fine. All right. So that just keeps it from, keeps the two blades from hanging up on each other. And uh, works out pretty good that way. All right. So I got two. I got a black one. Then I got two. Normally, I wish they were the same size, but this is my bait, so I'm not too worried about it. All right, so I got those on there. Now, the next thing you want to do is take your round bend pliers. 
and then you're going to put it in and I like to turn mine towards the hook so that way when I tighten it down and secure it down make sure I'm trying to make sure I get this on camera when I turn it out uh, bend it the rest of the way in it's going to stick out and not get hung up on anything all right so okay so put your Colorado blade on first seems to be the easiest way for me to do it and then next you put your barrel swivel on there make sure it goes all the way on and you have something like that your split ring, your barrel swivel, and your blade. Stick that on here. On your hook. Bend. And then this is where your needle nose comes in. Make sure you got a pair of needle nose that's got some teeth on it there. Because that helps hold it in place. And then all I'm going to do is catch that. It's always harder when you're doing it on camera for sure I'm trying to catch it and I'm gonna bend it but I don't want to smash this down I want to keep that I want to keep that a um, little bit of a bend right there that's why you want to use a round bend because it keeps you gives you a little round bend there and then one time what I do is like to Bend it just so it's sticking out against the the wire. Sometimes you can go even go a little further. Won't hurt. Just keeps that from sliding off of there. All right. Um. Let me see if I can find the other one where I did a double. Another way you can do it is with a twist. Um, see if I can find the one I did with the twist. So I did one with a twist so I could show you another way you can do it. Here it is right here. So another way is you can, I don't know if you can see that, but you can also bend a little extra and then make a little twist wrap around it too. And that will pretty much secure it on there. It ain't coming off. So that's another way to do it. Some people do them that way. All right. So there we go. We got our blades on there. Both going the right directions. This one don't matter too much because it's going to spin anyway on the barrel. But this for sure you want going towards your bait towards your loop all right next we're going to take a little dab of loctite and i always like to do this um just it just keeps the it keeps the uh skirt from sliding off on you because this particular mold don't have a big collar on it so i'll put just a little dab of loctite in there and then if I want to change skirts, it's easy enough. Just take a razor blade and slice that off of there. And then um, then you can uh, pull it off and put a new skirt on it. All right. And slide that onto your skirt. If you want to see how, to, how I make my skirts, go to my chatterbait video, my bladed jig video, because I show on there how I put my skirts on with the, make my skirts with the skirt tool. And there's tons of videos, and I'll be making them, making more jig videos. So I'll show you again sometime. All right, slide this up, get that collar on there, and then this one's got a little flash to it. Now I like to leave. Let's see. Let's turn this so the black is up. 
Now, I like to leave my skirts full when I'm selling them, just because that way a um, customer can trim up the skirts however they like. All right. Um, but this particular one, I'm going to trim just a little bit. And a lot of times it just takes working with them if you want them to hang. Let's see. Let's see, like this. So I'll leave them full and let the customer trim them down because some people like to do different things with them. All right. So this one I'm just going to trim short up here at the top. This is mine anyway. And give him a little a little uh collar. Alright, so there's the finished spinner bait. And uh yeah, I think it was a good project. I'm glad I shared it with you. Um there's a lot of color options you can do and uh Again, I'll run a little slideshow at the end so you can see all the finished baits. Um, but hope you guys enjoyed the video. Um, if you like this video, smash that like button. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe and ring that notification bell so you get notified when we put up the next video. And look forward to more videos coming up. I know some people have been asking me about the soft plastics, so I got another I'll start getting back on to the recipes and um, yeah so appreciate everybody and always remember stay crusty my friends mm -hmm.